Hello, I'm Benson and welcome to my channel. Today will be an update on my previous video seven days ago. So I bought the Bamboo Lab uh, P2S with my own money. So this video is not sponsored. The next one will be because I got some filaments from a supplier, which I got free of charge. But so far, this is not commissioned. And this is just my experience of me spending 699, actually spending 700 pound on the latest 3D printer by Bamboo Lab. Last video, I talked about the setup, unboxing and my experience with it. And so far, I kind of in the love and hate relationship with the P2S. One thing is that technology have leaped so far ahead from a couple of years ago. It's just unbelievable that, you know, you can just press a button and you can download whatever you want on the internet and it's just come out almost perfect. The auto leveling of the bed, the material that they now use for the uh, build plate for adhesion and even the flow rate of the filaments that you use. You use some clever um, algorithm to work out how much filament to press out. Every time before a print, it will print a little line in the front here and just to measure the current between the nozzle and the plate, they can tell you that, you know, if they are using enough or not in, in terms of the flow rate. So those are the high tech stuff which enable you to just press a button and it comes out a print after print, um, just perfect replicator. But that doesn't mean that I didn't run into any problem at all, which I'm going to talk to you about my fail bin, which is right here, and some pretty horrific uh, prints that I got. Now the P2S does have a uh, AMS, which is the automatic filament changing machine thing. It is a good thing to have, but that doesn't mean that you're going to print colorful print um, on all your products because it takes so long. Every time you change the filament, you have to do the little tower thing. You have to like, you know, rinse out the filament and then go into the next layer. And yeah, if you have thousands of layers, it's going to take so long. And the other thing is the nozzle. I had the machine for seven days, not five days, seven days, I can't remember now. So it had been nonstop printing. Nozzle which comes with the machine is a 0.4 uh, millimeter nozzle. I don't know if the extruder problem or the nozzle problem, after about a day or two of printing, it started to give me problem. So the extruder start to make those uh, very soft noise of click, 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 click noise, like the filament doesn't want to uh, pass through. And the machine throw up, um, error code like uh, abnormal resistant filament. I opened up the assembly, cleaned it, you know, um, try different filaments. So I have three bamboo lab um, filaments, which I bought. Actually, I bought four, but I put three in there. And I got one um, row of a rainbow color, non um, bamboo lab uh, filament. So for example, like this one here, this is a rainbow color one. <clears throat> this one in white and black is the bamboo uh, filament. No matter what I try, it just doesn't work. I follow the instruction, clean the extruder. I try to do a hot pull, cold pull um, on the filament on the nozzle. It still doesn't work. Luckily, I bought a couple of the nozzle at the beginning with the printer. So I got a 0.2 and a 0.4. So I start printed with the 0.2. A 0.2 nozzle gives you really, really fine detail, which I'm going to give you some really good example in a minute. So this is tiny. But at the same time, it takes so long. So I'm a quite impatient person. So, you know, I bought the machine to build parts for my workshop here. So most of them are big parts. In fact, I'm going to use the 0.6 nozzle instead of a 0.2 and to make it stronger as well. But then it has its own problem. Not just that it takes so long. Um, the adhesion um, on the bed are not as good as the 0.4. So you do need to have a bit of skills to make sure your parameter is like, you know, best for your machine. So I have tried the 0.4, I've tried the 0.2, I have tried mixed color. And um, the build plate, the one which comes with the machine is a texture plate. Actually, I have one here. So this one which comes with the machine is a gold color uh, build plate. And this one is texturized. And I would recommend anyone who started off um, first time doing uh, 3D printing to use one of these texture uh, plates. Unless you really, really want to have a smooth surface, then you move on to this one. But this one here, I, I hardly need to do any uh, brim. Um, to make it stick on the plate. So last thing to uh, post process. And um, when it's hot, you just flick it and then the print will come off. But if you leave, if you leave it in the machine to get it like, cool down, it will just slide off. So this is a really good plate for PLA. I highly recommend that. But in terms of the smooth plate, yes, there will be time that you need to use a smooth plate, but you do need to have a, a brim, especially when you're printing small parts where there's a very little footing on the build plate, but there's gonna be a massive um, build on top. So this is a fail print with a 0.2 nozzle. So let's go through the failed part first. So um, with the 0.4 nozzle, I have um, a lot of problems. 
So for example, the overhang kind of like missing here, trunks missing. When you do the um, tree support, um, the, you just end up taking out all the small parts as well. And you can see when it's coming to the slope here, when it comes to overhang, it kind of really, really messed up. But it still complete the model. This is a really, really uh, failed print. But when I change the nozzle to the aftermarket one, I will put the link in the description. Um, this one comes out almost perfect. There are still some defect lines right here, but this is kind of the optimum setting for speed. So this is just to get it out quickly. And you can see the tree support come out almost like a sculpture itself. Now this, this video you'll see a lot more close up because the last one is just to set out the machine. But this time I'm just showing you exactly how the print turned out. Um, there are some vertical uh, lines, artifact lines, but they are very, very faint. Like on this side, I don't see any at all. This side, yeah, there is, there, there is some that you can actually catch the light and you can see it. And this is the support which kind of came off. So this is on the plate, this is on the plate, and this was kind of inside. Yeah. So um, the poop bin is going to replace this uh, suit. Um, the reason is that I do want to close off the pot because there are some smell coming out from the machine, which I'm going to go through that later on with you guys. Because when I'm printing PLA, it actually draws fresh air out to the inside. And I think there is a lot of uh, fumes coming out from the machine itself. So um, 0 0.4 failure, change the nozzle, much better. And the nozzle of choice was from a aftermarket. Actually, I've got this one to show you. Um, this one is actually for a machine, which is the Bamboo Lab uh, H2D, but they share the same size and format. Now this one, I haven't used it yet, so I can show you guys. So this is the aftermarket nozzle. It's about the same price as a Bamboo Lab. I think it's about two pounds more expensive in the UK. And um, if you look at the front, the black little tip here can actually screw out. So by default, this one comes with a 0.2 mil um, nozzle head. And when you want to change it, um, you can. So it does come with two other sizes, a 0.4 and a 0.6. So um, for two pounds more, you get like um, additional um, nozzle tip that you can actually change. The one which comes with Bamboo Lab, it, you can't change it. So this is fixed. So for that reason, I want to try it out. And actually the 0 0.4, um, in the moment, I'm going to show you everything is printed from the aftermarket um, hot end. Um, I actually managed to find them on Ali for a lot cheaper than what I paid for on uh, Amazon, but I do need it very, very quickly. So that's why I bought it so I can continue printing. Now the good stuff. So for example, let's uh, go with the best print so far. So this is my little, well, this is my big dragon. So this one here is printed with the 0.4 nozzle and a 0.16 uh, layer height. So this is kind of uh, good quality. And this is the rainbow color non branded stuff. And this thing took 16 hours and it's 140% of the original um, 3D file. So you can see that everything turns out perfect. I even got the tree still attached to it that I haven't took out yet. So just realized that the tree is still there. So it does need a bit of support because I printed at 140. Some, some parts become floating. But anyway, so yeah. This is fantastic. But I wouldn't use a 700 pound printer for printing like, you know, just toys. But I might print 700 of these maybe. But yeah, so this is fantastic. It comes out perfect. So I will put the link on my description. So if you want to um, see it for yourself, this is from uh, Maker's World. And um, even the spring mechanism kind of work perfect. So now I can have all my nozzle here. Both of them are from Bamboo Lab. And the other thing is the aftermarket um, hot end, the uh, silicon sock doesn't really want to fit. So I have to use the original from uh, Bamboo Lab. Anyway, so this is your first layer. So just to let you see the quality. This is the slot for all my tools. And what impressed me the most is the spring. So this one come with a spring, all 3D printed. I really like the design and already give the maker a boost. But um, yeah, check it out on uh, Maker's World. Huh, speak too soon. I just want to catch now. 
I think something is stopping it from closing. Ah, yeah, perfect. So these two I'm really proud of, and they are just using the rainbow color uh, filament, which is not bamboo, which is not bamboo left. The next thing is the multicolor. So this is using the AMS. Um, again, this is the um, 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So this is actually a fail print, but I made it into something. So I'm making light boxes like this. So these are light box uh, using the light box uh, maker on um, Maker's World. It's a bit confusing if you are new to this. So because the AMS has four color, when you import the model, it asks you to synchronize the um, AMS on your on your actual printer. That's, for some reason, I got this wrong. The white and the gray color looks very similar on the screen, and I start printing it. So by the time the front finish is supposed to come out like a sheet like this, um, I think it's a couple of layer uh, thick. And then I realized that I printed in gray instead of white. So when you print it in gray, the, the light really hard to come out. So what I did was I continued um, following the project. So I print the back box for it as well. But instead of a full thickness, I put it, I just print like a, a half size and then I make it into like a uh, frame. This is a sign which doesn't light up, but it's okay. I will give that to my wife um, work table. It's just some motivation quotes. But the light boxes, um, this one I downloaded, I didn't make it myself. This one I actually made it myself. And basically they are just LED strips inside. And they even come with a function for you to add a wire out and a eyelet for hanging. So these are really, really fun, really, really um, easy to do projects to test out your machine. And the color separation, fantastic. There is no color breed at all. So um, there are some um, minor uh, defects, but to be honest with you, not really noticeable as such. With the 0.2 millimeter um, nozzle, the prints are really good, but at the same time, it's a bit challenging as well. So um, this one here designed by my sister is a uh, 1 to 12 ratio um, real life size chair. And you can see the details on there is really good. The lines from from uh, even from close up, you have to read, you have to look really closely to see the, the uh, layer lines. And this is, I think, printed in 0 uh, 0 0.08. And this is a ghost uh, figure. You can see a bit more of the lines between the layer. But still, for a 3D printed um, figurine, I think they are really good. But if you are into miniature stuff and you challenge yourself, you can really print some really, really tiny stuff. So this is a miniature ghost figure. You can see some layer line, but you can see the mouth open and you can see the two eyes on the back. And this dragon is just tiny. I don't even want to handle it with my finger because it will break. But this is uh, printed with the 0.2 nozzle. And this is the bigger version of the 0.2 nozzle. But you can see there is some failure at the back here. Again, I'm not sure if the bamboo lab nozzle or is it really my um, rookie skill, but I have problem with 0 0.2 uh, layers. So this one is a complete fail, but the Bamboo Lab uh, machine is really good in terms of the, um, the AI detection. It actually stopped the machine. So um, there was a few times that, um, for example, this one here, this is when I have the resistant abnormality um, error. And um, it, will, it happens at a very uh, early stage, but it still allowed me to override it and print and print and print and then stop. And you can see that, you know, it's still in one continuous piece, even though I have to stop like many, many times. But hey, you can't win it all, can you? The next thing I want to talk about, which I don't like is the smell. It is melted plastic in my um, studio right here, which I don't open windows usually. And after, let's say I leave it to print overnight, in the morning when I come in, I do smell the um, plastic smell. That's why I choose um, to use a uh, poop bin like this. So there's two ports at the back of the machine. One is the exhaust port and one is the uh, poop suit. So this is kind of an opening. So if the machine is drawing air from outside to cool the um, PLA, then the gas have to come out from either from the filter or from, from the, any kind of openings, even the gaps between the doors. Um, instead of uh, leaving the poop suit open, I'm going to use this one here, which actually closes it. But that means that I have to empty this. Um, I won't visually see how much poop that there is in there. But that's a minor thing. And the other thing is um, I'm going to print a exhaust. So it points to one side. And I'm going to use a little filter. This is a... Uh, 
I don't even know what the filter this is. So this is just lying around. I have actually another one. I have another one here. So on the top is a computer fan of a 12 volt. And I printed the adapter which goes inside. So the air is coming off on the top. It's drawing all the air from outside here. Is a blanking plate on the bottom right here. So this become my um, air filter. I'm going to have one behind the machine and maybe one near, near me. See if I can get rid of the smell. I will put the link in the description in terms of uh, where I got it from. Um, there are a lot of tutorials on how to, how, how to make this kind of air filter stuff. You can buy an actual air filter, but I'm just using what I have lying around, like an old um, 12 volt. Uh, I think this is a 14 centimeters fan. This is my journey so far. Like I say, I don't regret buying this machine. I do think it's the state of the art machine. Um, is it better than the previous version of the Bamboo Lab or the A1 or A1 Mini? I don't know because I don't have one to compare with. So next video, I'm going to start using the filaments that I got from Ali. Now this one here is a material that I haven't used before, which is BETG, uh, a slightly higher um, temperature filament. Um, I think the bed needs to be hotter and um, it's supposed to be stronger though. So if I print car parts and you know, if I'm going to print like stuff for my workshop here, um, this one have carbon fiber. Um, yeah, so this one have carbon fiber material inside. So it's supposed to be a lot stronger than your PLA. So these are very good for decorative stuff. But when it comes to physical um, stress, um, the PTEG, PTEG. Yeah, so that one will be a, a better choice, I think. I'm still learning, so you know, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. If you have any comment, leave it in the section. I'm quite new to the new age uh, 3D printer, so you know, if there's anything you want to know, you want anything you want me to try, I'm more than happy to show you guys. I take on comments as well, so the last uh, video, people saying that I don't show you guys the print quality. Um, to be honest with you, I was I was saving it all for this particular video once I have many, many prints to show you. The machine has been uh, plugged in non-stop so far for the last like five or six days. Um, it used a lot of energy because it's like a heating element in there, but I don't regret it because this is so much fun and um, I'm still learning a new skill. Hopefully I can make some parts for my uh, workshop here. Eventually I will pass this to my sister where she will continue uh, hopefully make some money from um, doing her files. Thank you very much for watching. I can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadgets. Bye bye. Dreams, his best work yet. From screens to circuits, he's got the flair. Sharing his vision with people everywhere. Two kids by his side, a family so tight. A loving wife, who's his beacon of light. In a world so fierce, he's carving his place. With passion and heart, he's setting the pace. Benson's on a mission, rising to the top.